we're going to keep things moving along, and we're going to end on a high note. So we're going to have a little bit of fun, I know, because we're bringing up the godfather of vape. And I couldn't be happier to be presenting uh, from Endless Mods. Please make a little noise for Paul Harrison. Thank you. Here you are, sir. Thank you. I think Godfather is a little bit stretched. But hey, that's what we put, man. So they asked me to do something um, on the stage, and I felt that battery safety as a thing generally is something that is lacking personally from a retail point of view and as someone that manufactures mechanical mods we manufacture liquid we've got retail outlets um, it's it's something that we stress on our staff is that if someone's buying a product in our store and then they're leaving the store they must be leaving the store with something that is safe and capable of doing what it's supposed to do I've put some notes together because public speaking is not one of my things, although I'm more than happy to get up and make you eat an onion or something mad like that. This is a bit out of my comfort zone, but we'll go with it. A few questions that I wanted to ask was, do you know the basics of battery safety? Are your customers leaving your establishment with a safety voice? Some myths about, for example, a Sam Samsung 30Q should never be used in a mechanical mod, but it's perfectly safe in a regulated mod the basics of Ohm's law and how to keep your customers safe and the importance of a battery wrap and the insulator. Now one of the things that I've found over my seven or eight years in the industry is that there's a huge amount of bro science involved in not only vaping generally but certainly in battery safety. And it's amperated at this but we can push it to that, it won't be a problem because we know what we're doing. And So it's how, how do you bring back something into store that means that anyone leaving that store is perfectly safe to use the device. There's lots of terminology that gets crossed over and mixed up and quite frankly, I think there's a lot of misguided people out there talking about something they heard about that they didn't quite understand. They put their slant on it and by the time it gets to the consumer, potentially they've got something that's not safe. You can't use that battery in a mechanical mod, it's a regulated mod only. And that statement is nonsense because the battery is only sa unsafe if the build is unsafe and that's only determined by someone who understands what they're using. As a retailer of batteries to your customer, would your staff know which battery is best suited to which customer base based on their vaping style and do you stock different batteries? Do you stock a battery that would be more suited to a mechanical device? Do you stock batteries that would be more suited to regulated? Do you understand why there's an insulating wrap on the battery, what its purpose is, and the safety of that not being there is catastrophic? And ultimately, this comes down to Ohm's law, and people bang on about Ohm's law as far as vaping is concerned. And Ohm's law, from an electrician's point of view, is very complicated, but from a vapor's point of view, can be broken down into some extremely simple steps. Although most app-based calculators use the same method to work out Ohm's law, there's two different calculations for working out whether a battery is safe in a mechanical device and whether a battery is safe in a regulated device. The basics of Ohm's law is very easy calculation. And as I said, there's, there's two ways of working this out and I've seen this is how we do it, and I've seen someone saying, Ohm's law is Ohm's law. It's a law and you can't change it. The two calculations use Ohm's law in a different way. One of them from the most extreme end in a regulated device, and one of them from the most extreme end in a mechanical device, but they're both looking at one with the battery fully charged on a mech, because that's when it's at its most volatile, and on a regulated, the battery's at its most volatile when it's flat because the devices that are put inside the regulated mods are designed to keep, keep giving a continuous amount of power even when the battery's losing its life. So that's when a regulated mod becomes more volatile, when it's at its lower end of the scale.
we've I've got some leaflets for anyone that wants them. And the reason for the leaflet is it just breaks down the two different methods of working out Ohm's law for a mech over a regulated. Working out the amp draw on a mechanical mechanical device is basically your voltage at the battery, which you would always use 4.2, the resistance of the coil, and then that is divided, sorry, the, the voltage of the battery divided by the resistance of the coil will give you the amps needed from the battery that's inside the mud. So for example, if the battery is at 4.2 volts fully charged and you're running a 0 0.14 build on a mechanical device, 30 amps is needed to, to operate safely. The reason why we use 4.2 volts is that is the most extreme the battery is going to be. With a mechanical device, if you start off safe, it only gets safer as the battery starts to deplete. Because if the battery is at 4 volts, if you do the same calculation, the amps needed actually starts to fall. So the battery actually gets safer the more voltage drop in the battery. When you're working out the amp draw on a regulated device, it's a little bit more complicated because you need to understand what is expected of the device. So an example that we used was, if you were using a 150 watt device that needed two batteries, each battery needs to be able to handle 75 watts. Now this is irrespective of whether the mod runs in parallel or runs in series, they both need to be capable of handling 75 watts. The next thing you need to do is de determine what is the minimum voltage required by that mod to even operate. So again, the example we used was in, a, in the Samsung device that we used, it needed 6.4 volts to continue to operate, which means each battery needed 3.2 volts in order to keep the mod alive. Now at 3.2 volts at 150 watts, the equa equation actually turns out at 24.6 amps. Now, what was interesting for me doing that math was that straight away the 30Q gets thrown in the bin as far as being a regulated battery because at that level it's not safe. Everyone who will watch this either on Facebook or in future will say that's a load of nonsense because the mod is designed to rule out all the imperfections in the safety aspect of the mod. The reality is, is that these products can fail so if you're running 150 watts on a regulated device, you need 20, just shy of 25 amps. So that's putting you in the category of a VCT5A or above. I'm not proclaiming that everyone who's using a regulated device should start binning batteries and not using them, but it's more about being mindful. Look at that for service. Be mindful of what is safe and what isn't safe. Now, bro science sort of ruled that 0 0.1 was fine on a mech mod, whereas in reality, this is at a point where, uh, if I go back four years, our peak battery was probably a 25R or a HE4, so you've got a 20 amp availability. People are running 0.1, you need a 40 amp. Then it became bro science about what was the difference between continuous and pulse rating. As a retailer, and also as a manufacturer of mechanical products. I've genuinely had a conflict of interest of selling my product to a consumer or not selling it based on whether I feel their knowledge to use that device is or isn't good enough. We try to be sensible in our approach to all of our customers coming in. We try to make sure that we give them enough knowledge to use the device more importantly, if they aren't the sort of person that's got enough knowledge to operate that device, for me, it's important that we refuse that sale. My seven years in this industry as a retailer, nine years as a vapor, suggests that most shops that I've been into as a consumer would more than happily sell anybody, any device that and they don't really care whether they know whether it's how to use that device or not. And obviously when you switch over from regulated to mechanical, the importance of understanding the battery safety, understanding 
how that mod physically works, how it conducts the power from the battery up to the RDA, keeping threads clean, contacts clean, all the things that will increase peak spikes in the amp drawage of the battery. It's important that, in my opinion, that anyone who works in a vape store that sells batteries should understand the very, very basics of what's required. We had a gentleman come into one of our retail stores with thankfully a regulated mod that was insulated and offered insulation between each of the cells, but he'd peeled the battery wraps off because they looked much nicer chrome than what they did green. And when he'd undone his cover and all of our staff took four steps back and asked him to leave the shop, he was laughing and saying, what's the problem? Because he didn't understand that the side of the battery is the negative. And we've had people come into the shop with mechanical devices where the batteries are disgustingly worn out and it's more by luck than judgment that they haven't worn. So as someone who's manufacturing mechanical devices, it probably opened my mind to how we sold mechanical devices in our shop. We certainly sell them different now five years after Endless launch than what we did prior to that. Mainly because my knowledge was less, my staff's knowledge was less. Facebook bro science said that you could get away with this and you could do that and I'm watching videos at home of someone using a stack device before stack devices were a mainstream thing. Wrapping a damp tea towel around a mod because it was getting that hot when it was being fired. Um, and that was Tom, Tom knows who I'm talking about and I'm not here to drop any names but that video went viral actually for the wrong reasons it went viral because people found it funny that this bloke's mod was getting that hot he had to wrap his mud up in a damp tea towel knowing what I know now it should have went viral for all the right reasons which is do not vape like, don't be the next negative vape statistic that goes out there don't be the next negative news story that goes out there and then finally for me, it's, it's understanding the difference between a thermal runaway on a battery and a dead short on a battery. Again, bro science says that if you run too low, you're going to vent your battery and that's going to blow up your mud and that's going to be the videos that you see on the news of people's pockets exploding. The reality is that the batteries are designed to manage an amount of amps. The reality is the pulse amp rating on them batteries is significantly higher than a continuous amp rating. Most people that are sub own vaping are only getting into the realms of pulse draw from the battery because even a one second drag on a 0.1 build is a significant amount of vape. The trouble is no battery manufacturer states where pulse amp kicks in and where continuous kicks in. So is it half a second, is it one second, is it three seconds? At what point does the pulse rating start coming into continuous writing. If you vent a battery by having a low build in it, and this is by no way advocating it's safe to run low builds, there's properties in the battery that are designed to ultimately cut the battery out and they get hot, parts of the battery break down. And when a bat in my in my experience anyway, when a battery vents through being run too low, it generally is quite an insignificant vent. You get a very acrid smell because the battery's lost its insides. It's a bit of a pop and a fizzle and mods get thrown outside and let it cool down. The videos that you see on Facebook and on propaganda videos about how dangerous vaping are and the pockets are exploding is, I'm almost certain, are dead short. So with a dead short, the negative and the positive have managed to gain contact, which is why we don't advocate you putting a battery in your pocket with a bunch of keys or a pocket full of change because ultimately you can make the circuit from one end of the battery to the other. When you're dead short a battery, the heat that's generated happens that fast that the parts inside the battery that are designed to break down don't have time to do that. And the only thing the battery knows what to do is to, to, to let off. So there's a big difference between a vented battery through thermal runaway, which is when someone's pushing the limits of the battery in a mechanical device over someone carrying a battery in a very unprofessional way and it dead shorting. Now, that's just that's my mantra on battery safety. 
I don't know how we get around it. I don't know how many retail retailers are brave enough to say, I don't feel comfortable selling you that device, so unfortunately I'm going to decline the sale. I say in my personal experience, being in many retail shops in the UK, I've not come across many retailers that are happy to turn a customer away. What I've found is, is when we have, and we have refused sales, we've refused to serve a customer who refused to buy new batteries because his batteries were that bad. Now, the, one of the issues we'll ho always have as a retailer is they come in thinking it's perfectly fine. We tell them that the batteries are faulty. They need a new pair of batteries for eight quid or 10 quid or 12 quid or whatever that battery cost is. Their f initial reaction is, Paul's just trying to get more money out of me. Now, actually, don't buy your batteries from me. Go to that shop. Go to that shop because I know that they also sell reputable batteries. Don't buy them off eBay unless you're buying them off Mooch or who's the other? Oh, Torchy. So there's, there's places I would say, look, you haven't got to buy this battery off me. If you're going to buy off eBay, buy off Torchy because we know that Torchy advocates battery safety, sells authentic sales. I just don't want you to be unsafe using the device. This isn't about me getting eight pound off you. This is about you not being on the news tonight because your batteries are vented in your pocket and the last place you left was my shop and my shop's on the news and I'm branded as a bad retailer. So if you take the hump, I'll happily lose your business. However, if you want to go home, get yourself on YouTube and educate yourself and then you might understand why I'm telling you not to use them cells. And if you feel that I haven't done you the misjustice that you feel I'm doing you now, come back in and we'll sit down and we'll talk. And we've had that many, many times where we've literally refused a sale. They've gone away, slammed the door of the shop. And actually they've come in within a few days and said, I didn't realise that the importance of the battery wraps not being torn. I didn't, I've had people take the insulators off because the battery wrap ripped. They've re-wrapped that with a bit of insulating tape. So that's okay because it's covered the bit that the wrapper's covering. But during that process, the insulator fell out. And it's like, of people who've got dents down on the, on the, the positive, the, the gap between the positive and the top side of the battery is just the difference of, if that touches, it's dead shorted. So if you drop a mud, and the positive's dented, discard the battery. It's not so I want you to spend another five pound on the battery with me, like I said, it's because I don't want you to use, you drop it next time, and if the positive touches the earth, it's dead shorted, and that's when they go off like a bum. So, we've done this leaflet. Anyone that's watching is welcome to, to come and grab a leaflet. It's got the basic calculations needed for mechanical use, the basic calculation needed for regulated use, Anyone that's watching this on social media, more than happy to email this across to any store. We're not about making, or selling, selling your copies. We'll send you, you, print it out, stick it up in your shops, hand it out to your customers. This is just about making sure that in an industry that seems to be getting bashed from pillar to post, in every avenue that we can get a negative, battery safety being so important to everybody, I believe it's discarded quite highly. And I think, if I go back six years ago when the likes of me and Tom and a lot of other people that are in this building started messing with mechanical mods, we actually learnt to understand what we had to do safely. Yes, we pushed the limits. Yes, we took the batteries above where they should be. But we'd done it in what could be, I suppose, considered the most controlled conditions. We understood how much over we were pushing the battery. We understood the difference between a mod getting warm because it's getting used a lot and a mod that's heating up way, way too fast because something's not right in there. We understand the difference. Some of my buttons on my mods get hot because I like to run a low build. But I also know within two or three pulls that that's not right, it's not right. And that comes from experience of using a mech mod. Again, as a retailer, if I remember when the Aspire Atlantis dropped in our shop, absolute game changer, sub ohm tank. We can now sell clouds out of the box to someone who's got no experience and they can leave the shop, blow in a cloud, get a nice, dense flavour out of this new sub ohm tank, and literally having a queue around our shop when that tank dropped. Selling out of stock, in fact, Evolution Vaping and, and ourselves started at a very similar time. Evolution being probably one of the biggest distros in the UK right now. And we launched that on the same day. We were the first two shops in the UK to have the Atlantis. Both sold out in the first day. And it blew my mind that we'd changed the vape game and we'd give 
literally, I remember putting posts up on my own social media saying, clouds out of a box. You no longer need to understand battery safety because you're on a regulated device. You've got a pre-made core that screws in and screws out. And actually within six months of that tank coming, I realized very quickly that that coming to market with no experience and no knowledge was probably one of the most dangerous situations that happened. And in my opinion, continues to happen to today where people are leaving vape shops with a stock tank, a 0.15 stock coil, any pair of batteries they can find that fit that mod. There's no two 18650s are capable of running 200 watts because there's too much amp draw. So any, so you get then a three cell battery, which will do 250, 300 watts is available. In theory, it's not actually available. So the regulator in the device is actually choking down the, the device. They put 200 watts on it because more vapors buy it because it's got a bigger number than the 180 watt or the 150 watt. But what I realized very quickly was there was a huge amount of people using these sub ohm devices. Bearing in mind that 12 months before that sub ohm was considered territory that only the professionals went into or the stupid. And actually, we as retailers sold thousands of sub ohm tanks to brand new vapors or mouth to lung vapors that are converted to sub ohm vapors who very quickly were in the middle of a mechanical boom four years ago and all of a sudden they're using a mechanical device screwing their sub ohm tank onto it not understanding that the sub ohm tank isn't hybrid compatible all these problems start happening and even me as a retailer at that point was saying well they should learn but the reality is, we should have taught them before ever we done that. Because when MEC became big, we used to have workshops in our shop on a Saturday morning just to build, learn to build coils, to understand what the difference is between a single coil and a dual coil. There's lots of people that said to me, so if I take one of my coils out, will that halve the ohmage? No, it'll double. Why? Well, because of Ohm's law. Get yourself on YouTube. I'm not an electrician, but I just understand the very basics. So if I go back to a time where I was rocking a state-of-the-art 30-watt DNA vapor shark, and that was my, I, I felt like I'd reached my pinnacle of my vape experience at that point. And I put a point to build on the regulated device, knowing that this thing was capable, I think, was fi firing at 5.6 volts. And I put the point two build on there and it was dire. And I, it, was, it was just weak and it didn't work properly. And I sold one to Shake at Signature Tips, uh, Signature Mods who makes the SQ. And he sent me a video saying, mate, this mod's dead. I've put this build on it and it's just not firing, it's weak. And over the course of that week of messing about, I ended up going up to, I think about a point four five build in a Mathiso RDA on a 30 watt device and I'd say that pretty much I was producing a cloud equivalent to what most people do today off a 140 watt device. I then realized that as I went up on my resistance of my coil, the battery then allowed more voltage. I didn't know this before, I didn't know this a week before, so I was, I was selling these products and learning along the way. All that rambling really is just to come back around to the point that it is so, so important that as an industry, we advocate where we can, in the right directions. We know that America have just faced a huge problem and are still facing huge problems. Personally, being involved in retail and knowing probably 80% of the people in this building, I've had lots of conversations since eight o'clock yesterday morning. Retail in the UK seems to be down somewhere between 15% and 45% was the worst situation that I had speaking to someone earlier all based on seven people dying, the United States claiming what it claimed, and people coming into my shop after vaping for seven years, saying that their husband has told them to throw the device in the bin because it's killing them, and they're much better going back on fags. We're faced with that worldwide, and it's had a worldwide impact. That's a big, big problem. I feel like people are starting to come together to try and face that problem and tackle that problem in the right way at the, with the right speech using the same terminology and the same mantra of we're not dangerous we're 95 percent safer than cigarettes we're not 100 percent safe 
but we're 95% safer. All that said, things like battery safety, in my opinion, is just as important. It's been, it gets lost. Pre-made coils take out the need of someone to understand battery safety because they know that that coil's safe with that battery. The truth of it is, if they put, for argument's sake, if you put a quad build into a mechanical mod and then took two of the coils out, it'll double the resistance. The same as putting two in and taking one out and doubling the resistance with one. So if you're running a quad build on a mechanical mod and that was safe for a stack mod, for argument's sake, if two of them coils come loose, so you've doubled your, or halved your resistance, you've doubled the amount of amp draw on, the, on the, the mod. And if you don't understand them basic, basic things, then I just fear that we have more negative stories going into the press. And the last thing we need forever, and certainly going forward, is continued bad press. For stuff that the retailers, in my opinion, are responsible for sorting out. So that's been my talk. If anyone wants any of the leaflets, we've got some on the stand. I believe we, we personally paid to have these 10,000 leaflets printed. It's not part of the Vapor Expo. Jay kindly said that he would put them out with the tickets tomorrow. So we know that there's at least 10,000 of these leaflets going out to people. We're offering free battery wraps on our stand this weekend until they're gone. So we haven't got an unlimited supply, but I think there's about 8,000 battery wraps. So there's a considerable amount of battery wraps over there. And that is just to try and get people into the habit of understanding that you can buy battery wraps for as cheap as four for one pound. And it takes 30 seconds to rewrap a battery. And for the sake of one pound and, and two minutes to do four batteries, is that worth walking around with a tube mod in your pocket that's got a bad wrap on there that you can't be bothered to change? You've spent 250 quid, 300 pound, 500 pound. I've seen mods as much as I've bought mods for my wife who's got an expensive habit of vaping as much as 1,200 pound. And regularly see people scrimping on one battery that costs five pound. And they've got a 200 pound RDA on top of a 400 pound mod with a 30 pound bottle of juice and the top of the range, twisted triple back flipple Clapton coils and their batteries in tatters. And it just doesn't, I don't get that mentality. Have a cheap mod that works and it's clean. Have a cheap RDA, put yourself an expensive, decent, authentic battery in there and you won't go far wrong. That's, that's my talk. Thank you for the people that are watching here live. Thank you for anyone that watches on social media at a later date. If anyone is watching either live or on social media, say if you come over to the stand, we've got some leaflets you can take back to the store. If anyone wants the information that's on the leaflets, we will email it gladly. You can print yourself and pass that knowledge out. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Paul Harrison. And you are absolutely correct because uh, for a newer vapor, I know when I started carrying around my, or batteries in traveling, you know, I was very mindful of how I was transporting those because you, the slightest accident uh, can be a disaster, especially in an airplane. So we have um, this is I'm just this is a disclaimer. This isn't a sexist remark. We have a lot of women that come into the shop whose husband is the vape guru in the house. So he builds the mud. He does what they do. And she's gone out shopping for the day. So oh, my batteries might go flat. The amount of women, honestly, that come into the shop and because they've had a new call, they say, oh, I'll change my batteries one minute. Put their arm into the handbag, start rooting around for loose cells. He's, he's shocking. It's, and, it, and, when you, and literally, I've said to people, well, what, what are you looking for? Well, my batteries, where are they? Well, they're in the bag somewhere. And then they'll pull out two bunches of keys and then a handful of change. And finally, they'll get down to the batteries. And I'm like, do you not understand? But they don't. And the reality is, a pencil battery that goes into a child's toy will vent just as, just as much and yet, there's, n there's, n there's no real battery understanding per se, whether it's going into a child's toy, because they could take it out up in the bedroom and throw it into the toy box that's got other bits and pieces in there. But the same logic applies. If the two ends touch by any means, it will dead short. And it's just, we, 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 we actually made 10,000 endless rubber battery wraps. We, give, we didn't sell none of them. We just give them out there. Um, and if, if I'm saying it's not part, part of a marketing campaign, of course, it is our names on the, on the thing. 
But ultimately, it was just to demonstrate that this thing that we would only sell for 50 pence or a pound is the difference of a battery blowing up in your pocket or not. It's the difference of driving down the road and smelling something funky, and two minutes later, the handbag is, is on fire. Um, it's, it's crazy, and it's just basically... The way that we've done the Ohm's law calculation on this means that you can literally look at the box of a mod and say, right, this is a 120 watt device. It's got two cells, therefore each cell needs 60 watts. It needs to run at at least six volts, so each cell needs three volts. There, that's your calculation right there. It'll tell you what amps, you do the calculation that's on there, and it'll tell you what amps you need. You look at any battery that you've got in your shop, if it hasn't got the amp rating on it, you shouldn't be selling the batteries because any authentic battery from any reputable seller such as uh, the Sanyos, the Sonys, um, Samsung, etc., will all have a, continu a, a, a continuous amp rating on, on the battery wrap. People just don't know. And yeah, it's only us that can educate these people. I hope this isn't an asinine question, but I mean, I've been guilty of it. I've since improved but with the wraps let's say it's slightly damaged at the top and that's just normal wear right if we're as we're pulling them in we're pulling them out sometimes it's just like slightly damaged um can you get away with that for a while or is it something you should address immediately from my personal point of view is if if there's any denting on the positive post at all i wouldn't use that battery personally and that's just because when when the positive pin moves down the piece directly underneath is the negative of the battery so You've got your battery, you've got your wrap, you've got your, your disc circuit insulator in the top, which the wrap folds over, and you've normally got your exposed positive. If that positive gets squashed down, and that can, certainly in a mechanical mod, if you drop the battery on the floor and it falls nose down, there's that much force inside, you can vent a battery doing that. If you've got a mechanical mod where some people will screw the RDA onto the hybrid and then screw the whole hybrid on, and you can't actually see what's happening, so what they'll do is they'll screw the hybrid all the way down until the threads are where they should be, but the reality is there might have, should have been some adjustments at the switch end. So as they're getting tighter and tighter, the RDA pin is just slightly forcing down the positive post. Now, we had someone in our shop vent a battery doing exactly that with the scoundrel mod. So the scoundrel mod was machined nice and curved, and the, the, the hybrid dish sat inside and it actually sat shallower than the top of the mud, and then the RDA sat recessed into the mud. So when he started putting it together, I literally said to him, put your hybrid in first, and then screw your RDA on, because you will see the resist you'll feel the resistance. But he screwed the disc onto the RDA, he screwed the whole disc and RDA into the mud, didn't realise that he, got, he was already hitting the battery. The, positive, the, the pin of the RDA forced the positive post into the negative, and it went off like a pipe bomb in the shop. So, in fact, I'm telling the light, it went off in his car outside the shop. So we'd, in the shop, we were saying, put it together this way. He went and sat in the car. Um, I was on my way to the shop after work, and my wife phoned me saying, some bloke's mods just literally, she'd watched him, some bloke's mods just set, set fire to the roof lining in the car. Now, that's not a fault of the mod. It's not a fault of the battery. It's operator error. And actually, an, an, an operator that had just been told not to set it up that way, so... I get there's only so much we can do as retailers. But the, I think I'll finish on the statement that if I can get to bed at night and sleep knowing that I've done my best to make sure someone's vaping safe and they choose to ignore me, I'll get a good night's sleep. I feel like I've done my bit. There's too many retailers out there. And certainly in today's climate where sales have declined for everybody because the market's become so saturated, they're, they're just only invested in getting the next sale out of someone. At, any expense and that's that's the stark reality of the industry that we're in so it takes a bold retailer in current climate to say sorry i don't believe you've got the knowledge to use that device so i'm going to decline your sale because they're scared they're going to run off to the next retailer down the road who might not have that many scruples about them and just give them the mud so they're thinking well if they're going to sell it to them anyway down the road i'm always just giving the mud if he blows himself up it's not my problem the reality it should be our problem and we should take some ownership of it the same as we take ownership of the situation in America. We're taking all these big ones, we're taking them on and we're trying to advocate them and we're trying to fight against them. Battery safety for me is something that should be managed much, much better than what it is. And it's the retailer that should be forcing that out to the people. Absolutely. And those for uh, for those of us who are seeking more information, can you recommend any great maybe uh, YouTube 
uh, pioneers Mooch, uh, for battery Mooch, safety? Mooch, if you go to Mooch, if you Google Mooch, he's got he's got forums, he's got his own channel. He's he he, he will. You can print off sheets that you can put up in your shop that will say 25R, 20 amp continuous. It don't give you. He, Mooch has tried to give vape ratings because he's extremely clued up to the next level. So he's tried to allocate vape ratings to battery cells. The trouble is that most manufacturers have now started putting disclaimers out saying our batteries aren't for this industry. So there's a bit of a conflict of interest there. They're, n they're not designed for the industry. Most of them are designed for power tools, computers. The 2700 was born from the Tesla car. The 21700 was a growth of the 20 2700, the 21, sorry. Um, so there's manufacturers now sticking stickers on the battery saying we, this is not designed for vaping. And there's retailers selling them to vaping customers with these stickers still stuck on there. There's always going to be a conflict of interest about do I remove that sticker and sell it knowing that it's a 25R and it's, it's more than capable of managing 0.2 ohm. It's a VCT58, it's capable of running 1.3, I think safe off the top of my head. Or do you leave it on there and explain to the, the customer that they're not designed for vaping, however, the chemistry in there is perfect for what we're doing. They've got an amp rating more than capable of managing what way we're vaping, etc., etc. But Mooch, well, he's got no qualms in naming shaming. We've got an issue, a big issue in this industry is Chinese companies predominantly rewrapping cells and advocating a much, much, much higher amp rating than what's, what, the, what the cell's capable of doing. Mooch is quite open about them companies and saying, don't buy, they're claiming it's this. For God's sake, I've seen copied HB6 cells. So a HB6 off the top of my head was a 30 amp 18650, but it was only 1500 ma. So it was really designed for comp. So you'd have two or three drags and then the essence of the battery was gone, but it had a very high amp rating. You could buy clone battery wraps off Fastech to put on a battery that claimed it was a 30 amp cell. Now that frightens me because there's unscrupulous people out there buying these battery wraps and sticking them on batteries that have not 30 amp rating. The thing with Mooch is he updates his list regularly. He's very honest in his opinion. If he's checked things like back in the day, E-Fest was always, oh my God, you can't use E-Fest, but the reality was some E-Fest sales were fantastic and some weren't. I think what we've got now is we've got a very consistent supply of cells from a very good level of manufacturer such as Sony, such as Samsung. Um, they cost, on the scale of things, pennies or pounds more than a cheaper alternative. As a business, we don't make a huge amount of money on batteries. It's actually something that I feel should be factored into our package sale. And on most of our if you come into our shop and buy a mud and some juice, etc., as a new starter, we'd put the batteries in there free of charge. Um, so we're not making it. The margin on our battery is considerably less than anything else in the shop. It's there as a, an add-on. And anyone that buys our devices is going to need batteries. If we can look after them by giving them a good battery, then we hope to retain their business for coils, juice, etc., etc. So I'm not telling anyone how to run your business. You can charge £25 for a battery. You can charge £2. You can give them away. But they're not expensive. And the difference between a branded quality battery and a, and a cheaper alternative that hasn't got anything like the amp rating that the wrap's claiming is probably less than £1.50 in most cases. And on that basis, do you want to risk your reputation as a retailer for £1.50? Because I certainly don't. More importantly, do you want a, another negative tick in the box against the vaping industry to say another mod's gone off because vaping's killing people? Not only is it blowing their legs off, you've got this issue there. So it's... They're not expensive. They, they were expensive. I, mean, I can remember paying 12, 14 pounds for a single cell back in the day. Um, but by comparison now, most shops are selling 25 hours for between three and six pounds, depending on what way they choose to market that, that battery. Six pounds for a battery when you've just spent 150 pounds on a mod. He's not a lot of money, so. Do we have a show special this weekend if I come over and pick up some new batteries? We've got all sorts of batteries over there. We've got 21700s, we've got some 2700s, we've got the 26650s, we've got some 18650s, both VCT5A and 25R. And um, if I come early, I can get a free wrap. The free wraps are available as of this morning. They're there. You can go and get one. You can. We, 
we probably won't have we was originally we was going to have someone there wrapping batteries my issue with that is if we make a mistake we're liable but if you go onto youtube and just literally search re-wrapping 18650 cell there'll be hundreds of videos you can do it with a hairdryer you don't need an engineering degree to do this the only thing you need to do is when you take the wrap off you need to make sure you keep the insulator and you must put the insulator back on before you wrap it apart from that the battery wraps themselves are cut to length as long as you've got it in the middle when you heat it up it'll fold around you'll have a nice distance top and bottom it's not a difficult thing to do you can buy some very pretty battery wraps if you want to make your batteries look nice and in a, in a clear squonk mud or whatever if you just want to change them um, but battery wraps are not expensive by any stretch and changing them is easy well, thank you so much. This is a very important talk. Um, get your hands on one of these. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Paul? Yep. So she asked, um, if you, how can you tell if you have a dead cell? How can you check it? You, you put it on your battery charger and it, a, a dead cell won't charge. invest in a better battery charger no I mean to be honest if you, again on the scale of things I, I've been vaping from the very very first time nine years ago mech use probably started big for me about six years ago to the point where we launched our own brand of mech mods that's where it, that was where it was all born from I think I might have purchased three battery chargers in six years um, and on that basis, to get a decent battery, again, a branded battery charger that tells you where you're not, you can set your, your amp limit of going into the battery, because again, the higher amperage that you charge at, the, the more you deplete the life of the cell. One that tells you what the voltage is. If you're running paired batteries in a regulated mod, my own personal mod actually gives me a readout of both batteries at the same time. So I can see if one's dropping more than the other. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'd, we, d we don't, again, as a shop, we don't sell cheap chargers. We sell the cheapest charger in a good charger's range, but we, do, we don't just look and see what the cheapest Chinese charger we can get in, and there you go, two pound. I think a, a D4 is about 22 quid, 23 quid. You're not a lot of money. I've, I personally use a, an i8 charger. I've had, it'll take 21 700s, 2700s, 2650s. My missus has got mods that take uh, 18 350s. It'll take all of them, and, but it'll tell me what I need to know. Um, Tom and I had a conversation the other night, actually, which was nothing to do with, it weren't like an open discussion, it was just Tom and I talking, and it came up the subject of marrying batteries. Um, if I stood up here and said that I've always married my batteries, I'd be lying. However, I'm, I'm fortunate that I own a couple of vape shops and when I need new batteries, to be honest, I normally take 20 batteries home, I discard the other 20 via appropriate means, which is, is there, normally... Yeah, is super, there a proper way? What is well, proper? We've got, we've got bins in both of our shops that we pay to get rid of where you can just drop your old cells in. We've had customers trying to fish bloody batteries out of the bin because it looks better than the one that they're using. So we now keep it around the other side of the counter so they can't help themselves to the dead cells. Um, but yeah, I mean, always discard the battery in the right way. Don't throw it in the bin, don't throw it in the wheelie bin outside because again, when you're putting more rubbish in, you're in the same situation you are as a handbag, only on a much bigger scale. Um, but marrying batteries is, it's, for me, it's important to marry brands and amp drawage or use if I take 20 cells home, 10 might be allocated for single mods, 20 for dual mods. I don't number them and I don't mark them up and I don't asterisk them and they're not always stayed together, but I know that they've been through a similar amount of cycles in a same device of the same battery. Some people religiously get a pair of batteries, A1, A2, they're only charged together, they f rotate them in the charger. They, and is that important? I'm not going to say no because do what you want to do. For me, it's more about don't run a 15 amp battery with a 35 amp battery because one's going to take much more of a belt than the other. Don't run one charge battery with one flat battery. 
because if you're running in series, the power's still going through the flat battery and you've still got a reliance on it pumping out an amount of amperage. A lot of it comes down to common sense. And I think what we tried to do with the leaflet was just give an absolute basic, basic sum to say, that's your battery voltage, that's your resistance, this is the amp drawers that's needed, look at the battery, if it's greater or lesser, you're either good or you're bad. There's lots of people that are going to watch this and say, oh, you can run much lower than that. You can run however low you like. Like I said, my mantra for going to bed every night is knowing that I've tried to do the best I can do by my customers, and if I've done that and they choose to ignore me, then they're grown up people. That can what can do you do? Well, this has been very educational for me. Um, so also for those of you at home, again, you can Google Mooch. Yep. And uh, there's a ton of resources there. Also, if you're joining us this weekend, go see Paul and his team with Endless Mods and get yourself a free battery wrap. Pick up a mod while you're there. Um, please make a little noise for Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you want, you can leave a few too, and we can make sure everyone gets their hands on one of these. Um, and uh, of course, if we run out, you guys can head on over there. So thank you so much, sir. I'll steal that from you. All right, and moving along.